I bought this tractor at the same time I bought that old uh, Alice Chalmers B. So it's been almost two months, I guess, since I've owned it. It has a very similar story to the Alice Chalmers B. Uh, the previous owner had it in his shop uh, indoors for many years. I don't know exactly how many. And prior to him getting the tractor, it had been supposedly rebuilt. Um, I don't know to what extent yet, but just taking a walk around it here, it looks very complete. I put it in the back of my shop and just left it there. I wanted to make my first inspection of it uh, part of this video. So let's check this thing out and see what condition it's in. This tractor is equipped with a magneto ignition and I like this setup here. It's got the coil on the outside versus on the inside. So I'm just gonna check for spark real quick. And just a side note, the hand crank from the Alice Chalmers B here fits perfectly in the Farmall Super A also. See how it feels. It feels all right. I also heard the magneto impulse fire, so that's good. All right, let's check the uh, carburetor, see if it's got any fuel in the bowl. shouldn't be any fuel on the outside of it there this is just a tiny little carburetor this section here is the intake where the choke butterfly is so this part over here is the bowl you can see how small it is but that nope right there must be the uh, drain for the bowl so because we had fuel on the outside of this nut I'm gonna make the safe assumption that there's fuel in the bowl also which means that the carburetor is getting gas from the sediment bowl on the fuel tank so that's good Let's see what's going on with this here. Oh, it's loose. Well, maybe that's a good thing. All right, there's gas in the bowl. So we're gonna close this, see if that doesn't stop the leak. We'll come back and check on it in a while and see if there's any drips there. I'm going to engage the throttle control rod now so that's on the right side of the tractor, but it goes around up front to the governor and then comes up here. So this is a control rod right here for the throttle. Yeah. That's working. This right here is the choke rod. Pull it to engage the choke. Push it all the way in to turn the choke all the way back off. You can see down in there, it's engaging and disengaging the choke. The sediment bowl's tucked up in there a ways, but I think that's a decent shot of it anyway. Let's turn the fuel on. Yeah, we got fuel coming out. So even though it doesn't look terrible, I suppose the prudent thing would be to drop this bowl and clean out the sediment before we uh, get too much farther with it. And amazingly, I could unscrew that with my fingers. All right, we'll get the bale out of the way. See if the bowl is, no, oh, the bowl actually came off. Yeah, that's a good thing we took that off. We'll get all that crud out of there and get a new gasket for it and reinstall it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while while we're doing other things. All right, here's the sediment bowl out of the parts cleaner. I found a pretty good gasket on an old uh, sediment bowl I had on the shelf, so we're gonna use that. 
All right, it's all reinstalled. I put a little bit of grease on that rubber gasket. We'll open the fuel. Sometimes when you reinstall these, you get some sort of a, like an air pocket in there and gas won't drain from the tank and you have to loosen them back up again um, temporarily to get the gas to start to flow. All right, so it's uh, reinstalled, <clears throat> it's not leaking. So I'm gonna check the carburetor one more time to make sure we've uh, still got flow all the way to the bowl. Oh, by the way, tightening this nut down uh, did fix the leak that we had earlier. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this back down and uh, we'll move on from there. For comparison, here's some uh, new gasoline. Honestly, this stuff will probably still burn okay. And the good news is that there's not a lot of sediment in here. The gas tank itself also looked, you know, relatively clean. So I might just take the lazy route and just add fresh gas to the already existing in the tractor and then just use it up. All right, let's check the bottom of the air filter, see how it looks. And she's got oil. That looks good. Now I want to get this top assembly removed so I can look down the uh, intake here and see if uh, there's any obstructions. Uh, the belts actually look to be in decent condition and they're even adjusted somewhat properly. So far so good on this old girl. Let's check the oil. So this tractor does not have a dipstick whatsoever. It's just got these two drain cocks. And the upper one is the one we generally check to see if the oil is at the proper level or not. So I'll open this. There it is. There it is. She's thick. Let's close it back up. So we'll probably leave that oil in there for the first startup, and then we'll change it out after I get it running. That was hard to get on camera because uh, the camera was kind of in the way there. I had to get both my arms up in there. But uh, you can see right here, it's got a sufficient amount of oil. Yeah, it looks pretty good. The plug for the final drive oil is right about there underneath this plate for the step. So to be thorough, I'm gonna remove this step and get the oil checked. Shouldn't take very long. There she is. Right there. OK, 
Get the old redneck dipstick. Oh yeah. That's good looking oil too. All right, good. The one on the left over here is easily accessible. I already checked that. Looks good in there as well. All right, this is the fill plug for the uh, hydraulic touch control system. And you can also check the level here. Remove the plug and they say if the level is about a half inch below, you know, the bottom of the plug, that's the correct level. I can see right away that it is. Yep. That looks pretty good too. All right, next we'll check the coolant. Well, she looks bone dry from the top. We're just gonna add some and see how much it takes. And hopefully nothing comes out the bottom of this. Hopefully there's no leaks. All right, I don't see any leaks. I'll we'll keep our fingers crossed and check the level again after we get it running. It took about uh, three quarts maybe. In full disclosure, off camera, uh, I had the ignition switch on and the battery hooked up and I bumped the starter just to see if the starter worked at all. And the dang engine tried to pop off. So I know that it's going to at least try to run here. So let's see what happens. Good start, huh? Give it a little bit more fuel, try it again. Well, for its first run, it sounds fantastic. Uh... We have an issue though. The ammeter was not registering uh, charge. 